Alright, this is the installation screen of Fedora. The latest version is Fedora 10. Almost all Fedora installation CDs or DVDs are the same. Uh, anymore, they're all DVDs. Anyway, unless you already know what you're doing and have a reason not to, hit enter for the first option to install or upgrade an existing system. Um, and if you already know what you're doing, then you don't need to be watching this video. This is running off a virtual machine, so it's going to be running slow. And on top of that, I mean, installation CDs are always slow. Anything running off CDs is slow. Anyway, um, this assumes that you are attempting to keep a Windows installation on the same hard drive. I actually, <coughs> I actually already uh, started the install process once, and then I wasn't satisfied with the video that I made, uh, and I just deleted it and decided to do it again. Um, now, if you've watched the previous video, then you will be aware that we have already resized Windows to make room for Linux, and we have already created an empty data storage partition. The purpose of a data storage partition is to keep your data separate from your operating system. So if you ever have to reinstall either one of your operating systems, Windows or Linux, then you will not have the problem where you're screwed and you lose your data. Uh, here, the first screen is language click enter for english unless you want to choose a different one enter for the keyboard layout of american unless you want to choose a different one and it's going to give me this fucking error again this is one of the reasons i get so mad at virtual machines all right here dumbass i'll put the cd back in for you if you're running a virtual machine and you get this error the fedora disc was not found in any of your cd rom drives even though my dumbass just booted from it if you ever get an error like that Pop out the DVD, pop it back in, and click keep hitting OK till it loads it. And click skip installation media check. I'll explain that here in a moment. Okay, a moment's up, I'll explain it. Um, the reason is the reason that you check your install media is to check to make sure it's not corrupted because in your installation process if one package one single package that's marked for installation fails then you have to reboot your damn computer start the entire process all over again and uh, unfortunately you gotta pay very close attention to what package that was so you know not to select it another time um, it would be nice if the Red Hot Corporation, the Fedora Project, would uh, create an option in Anaconda in the installer that says, Hey, this package is fucked. Do you want to uh, reboot your computer? Or do you want to skip this package and all packages that depend on this package? And then you could just keep going and uh, just install that package later after you get a working installation. Um, but no, for right now, you don't have that option. <laughs> you get to start all over again. So, um, so you ask, why would you skip the media installation check? Well, I'm very impatient, and the check takes about 20 minutes. That's 20 minutes longer than I want to spare. Um, that's the primary reason. The secondary reason is, if the installation media is corrupted, then you have to burn it again, which means another 15, 20, 35 minutes uh, burning the CD, re rebooting into Windows, or going to another computer, burning the DVD all over again, then coming back and starting the install process over again. You're, you're wasting over an hour. So you're better off to get a, install a minimum number of packages and just hope none of those are correct or corrupted. Install the bare minimums, and once you get a working desktop installation, download all the... All the uh, all the packages you wanted and on top of that those you want to update those because they'll be the latest versions because you're downloading them um, so it's kind of like a double benefit click next on the first screen <coughs> so I always skip the media installation check and then do a basic installation and then install everything else I want later and that's what you're gonna do whether you like it or not because that's what I'm gonna show you how to do and if you know how to do it another way, then again, you don't need to be watching this video. Again, anything coming from an install CD is going to be slow. Anything coming from a CD period is going to be slow. Especially when it's virtualized. Alright, if you are going to have another Linux machine on your same home network, you need to change your host name. It's a host name dot domain name. 
Um, so you can leave local domain alone, but if you want, if you're going to install Linux on another machine on your computer network, on your home network or office, whatever, if it's going to be behind the same damn router as another Linux computer behind the same router, change the host part of this host name dot domain name uh, to something unique. Otherwise, leave it be and keep going. The reason for that is. And you may never run into this problem, but when you start getting to doing different things with Linux, select your time zone on this screen and click next. This assumes you know your time zone. If you're not, if you don't know your time zone, go to Wikipedia. Um, enter a root password. A root is uh, an administrative user. It is different than uh, Windows users, administrative users, in the fact that it, there is only one root user that is all powerful throughout the system. You do not use the root user for anything unless you are doing administration. You never log in as the root user. Uh, and even then you shell in as the root user. You don't log in to the user's desktop unless you absolutely are, have some kind of phobia of using command line. Um, click next after you create a password. You're not going to create any user account yet. You'll do that after you do your installation when you're doing your initial setup. Yes, continue with the weak password that we just created. Anyway, the reason for the unique names that's needed for each computer is if you start installing services later, you're trying to convert, uh, can, uh, configure servers like a Samba server or a uh, well, m mostly just a Samba server. When you go to convert them or in con configure them, you have to give each computer a unique name. Otherwise, if localhost dot local domain is looking for localhost dot local domain's files, then it's going to look on its own hard drive. If two computers have the same name, they're going to get confused um, when using certain services. All right, on this menu, this is your hard drive options. Click Create Custom Layout. We are in always creating custom layouts. We're doing everything by hand and then click next. All right, here you see I've already got partitions set up. Uh, I'm going to delete these two right here and now for the sake of this example. Yeah, delete it, delete it, delete it. Come on, come on, come on. I'm impatient. You take too long. Delete, 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 delete. Thank you. Please come again. All right. Um, as you can tell, I'm sleep deprived and I'm nicking. All right, here we have our data storage partition that I showed you how to make when I showed you how to resize your Windows partition. So, at cancel. That is your pretend Windows installation for me. Uh, and this is my data storage partition. The purpose of a data storage partition is to keep your data safe at all times and separate from your hard drives or from your operating systems installations. This means that if Windows gets hacked, they can't get your personal files because they're on a set. Well, they, I mean, they, they can, but if Windows gets screwed up real bad, your personal files are still safe because they're, they're on a separate partition. If you ever have to install Windows for any reason whatsoever or Linux, your personal files are safely stored